In our third video, we're going to talk about quantum computing cases that are not optimization. And so we're going to start with Biogen. So pharmaceutical company. This is a few years ago. They compared molecules to discover new pharmacological pharmaceutical candidates for new drugs. And the chemist has questions. This allows them to answer those questions more quickly. Dow DuPont speeding up the discovery of new materials and new products. Um, their benefit right now is just their learning, learning how to do this better. JSR Corporation, um, calculating the excited state energy levels of molecules. So why is that important? Well, today we just estimate them. We, we kind of guess a little bit. We approximate. But if I can calculate precise levels, I can simulate larger and more complex chemistry applications I can use the actual math to generate larger and larger, you know, on computer potential candidates for experimentation. Bosch Research. Now, we met some of the Bosch team in uh, uh, University of California, San Diego. Uh, in this case, they're going to produce better hybrid models for fluid and thermodynamic challenges. And they're doing this right now as a learning exercise and to build capability. But you can just imagine if I can make shapes more efficient as they move through space and time, uh, I'll have better efficiency. BASF. And uh, BASF has very large supercomputers, and they're also looking at quantum to calculate molecular energies, to study and predict chemical reactivity. And this is right now a learning exercise since the quantum computers are not big enough to do this usefully, especially compared to the supercomputers that they have. So Ericsson, Sweden, radio access network signal processing and fault prediction. So they're working towards an edge or a, uh, a strategic advantage for 5G network capacity and reliability. Obviously a more reliable 5G network means happier telco customers. British Telecom, building an ultra secure data network. Now, British Telecom has been doing this for a very long time, and they now have an experimental test bed uh, between their headquarters and some of the universities nearby. They're learning multi-vendor quantum key distribution to create an unhackable network. I can only imagine that customers would like to buy such a network, or at least use such a network to protect their mission critical communications. Willis Towers Watson. So they're learning how to quantify risk with less computing power. And they're doing it using uh, Microsoft Azure, so a simulated system, and they're gaining orders of magnitude performance acceleration as they, as they use some of those models to do this. Now we're gonna talk about a lottery. The UK National Saving and Investment Bank picks monthly lottery winners out of all of their bond, bond holders, bond accounts. They pick 3 million out of 79 billion bonds, and they use quantum random number generation. So this is a quantum technology case that is not a quantum computing case. So this job ran in 12 minutes on a quantum computer down from nine hours for the monthly draw, so it's much more efficient. For General Dynamics mission systems, they are looking at offensive and defensive battle situations, and they're looking at securing communications, navigation without GPS or global positioning system, and enhanced radar sensing and stealth. The benefits? Space-based terrestrial communication, that is you know, very secure. Passive and autonomous navigation, so think of it as if you're a ship on the on the high seas, um, no one can see you. And you can be autonomous in your navigation without communicating with anybody. And then finally, your radars can be enhanced in detection of incoming threats. And also, they can be near invisible to, uh, to those incoming threats. Lockheed Martin, Dark Ice, a trademark name for navigation. In this case, you can navigate without global positioning system. So why is this important? Well, if GPS, the system is, you know, the system of satellites is denied in a certain field or a certain time, 
uh, we can still you know keep moving. We can also track moving objects passively. Uh, Dark Ice, I believe the website said, is about the size of a football, American football. And so then we have China Shipbuilding Industry Corp, CSIC, and they're looking at mobile navigation, communication and detection for naval platforms. So for them, same thing. I want to navigate without GPS. I want to track objects and I want to communicate passively on the high seas. So it's very, very important that if, let's say you're in a submarine, uh, that no one can find you. So Wuhan Institute and the State Key Laboratory with CSIC are looking at miniaturizing atomic magnetometers to detect weak magnetic fields around the Earth and anomalies in those uh, magnetic fields to detect motion. So I can detect motion far away, but I can also use those same technologies to help people or to detect activity within the human body. And then Case Western Reserve University and EU Cordis are looking at how they make MRI scanners faster and more sensitive, higher resolution. And for Case Western, working with Microsoft again, scans were three times faster or 30% more accurate, and they can choose what benefit to bring.